Israel led the world in a moment of silence, remembering the estimated 1,400 people killed in the Hamas terror attack one month ago. At least 240 others were taken hostage. The Israeli defense minister says its troops are now in the heart of Gaza. CBS News senior White House correspondent Weijia Zhang joins us now from D.C. Weijia, does Prime Minister Netanyahu's post-war plan, he said that Israel for a while is expecting to, to maintain security in Gaza. Uh, does that align with what the U.S. wants? Well, Lilia, what we don't know is exactly what the prime minister meant by that, because he said that there would have to be a security role on the part of Israel indefinitely, because he said you see what happens when there isn't. But the U.S. has made very clear, and actually I just got a, a text from a source here at the National Security Council to reiterate that the U.S. does not support a reoccupation of Gaza. Um, and so this uh, wording really matters here. A security role, um, Netanyahu might be distinguishing from having a permanent presence there, which the U.S. Uh, would not support in terms of occupying Gaza. Um, and, and I think, you know, and also in this note that I just got, the U.S. is stressing that Palestinians must be at the forefront of decisions when it comes to, um, you know, what happens when this conflict is ultimately over. But the U.S. also um, stresses that we cannot return to October 6th, that Gaza cannot be a place where attacks are launched on Israel. So this is very complicated and it's going to take time. But one thing that Netanyahu or the Biden administration has not mentioned is exactly what that plan mm. looks like. So all we know is that Netanyahu says that Israel has to have some kind of security presence there. It's, you know, such an important question because up until, as you said, October 6th, I mean, Hamas kept strengthening and the Palestinian Authority did not. And part of that, a lot of people are blaming on Netanyahu's own policies. Um, but, you know, something that's been impossible to ignore are is just the death toll of the attacks from Israel in Gaza. According to the Palestinian Health Ministry, the death toll is now or more than 10,000 Palestinians with more than 4,000 children killed. How much pressure is the Biden administration getting outside of Israel to stop the offensive, to call on a ceasefire? Lilia, there is mounting pressure from the entire world. In fact, the United Nations passed a resolution um, to have a ceasefire, and the United States was only one of 14 countries that voted against it. And senior officials here make clear that the U.S. does not support a ceasefire because they argue that that would give Hamas um, the capability, the time, the space it needs to rebuild and to launch another attack exactly like the one we saw on October 7th. Um, but to your point, there is um, a, a call from many people, especially leaders in that region, for the U.S. to put more pressure on Israel to have a ceasefire. But Prime Minister Netanyahu has made clear that he will not agree to that unless all the hostages are returned. And that's just the starting point for negotiations. And so this could be a very long, drawn out phase of the war, um, especially if the U.S. continues to supply uh, money, funding for Israel um, without having, you know, without calling for a ceasefire. But it is notable that the U.S. continues to call for humanitarian pauses. They're yeah. calling these tactical pauses. In fact, the president just brought this up again on the phone with Netanyahu mm -hmm. yesterday, which we know that Netanyahu did not agree to, but says he is open right. to the idea. He seems open. Now, the State Department has been saying or has said that it's helped more than 400 U.S. citizens who were stuck in Gaza depart uh, through that Rafa crossing. What's the latest that we're learning from, from those Americans? Well, the tricky part here is that once they leave, the State Department is not tracking where those Americans go. They are free to go wherever they want, wherever they can. So um, in terms of the exact number of people who are able to evacuate, um, they are relying on the embassy in Cairo for that mm -hmm. data. And so, yes, uh, the State Department says now some 400 Americans have been released, but we know that means about 600 Americans are still waiting to get out of there. Uh, that is the number um, that's estimated 
in the beginning of all of this about 1,000 Americans and their family members uh, who were there, 1,000 people in total. Um, and so that is why the pressure continues to be on to allow for these people to, to get out, but also to allow humanitarian aid to get in. And uh, we will be closely monitoring to see just how many more people can get out, Lilia. Ouija, thank you. Mm -hmm.